<laughs> That's funny though. All yeah. Right. I'll start right here. How's everybody doing today? This is the Bronx Tech Show, week five. My name is Miguel Sanchez of Mass Ideation, The Rise TV, and Meta Bronx. And I'm Philip Shearer from Scenic, The Glass Files, and Meta Bronx. As you know, the Bronx Tech Show, in the, on the Bronx Tech Show, we interview people in the innovation tech sector and try to teach people about entrepreneurship. So today, our guest is Join Rodriguez, founder and CEO of Bazaar. Welcome, Join, to the Bronx Tech Show. How are you on this fine, rainy <laughs> yeah, day? Man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. A little cold, but uh, yeah, I made it. <laughs> June, um, June is not... Um, he knows how to make it rain. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, so full disclosure, all three of us know each other really well. We've all worked together uh, in various capacities over the past, uh, what, like th- three years now? Uh, yeah, I would I would say a little more than that, no? Yeah, it's just <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. It goes real fast. So Julian's startup and Julian has actually, have actually made history. They're the first ever venture backed startup from the Bronx. They raised uh, venture capital money from one of the top venture capital firms in New York City. Um, so it's a historic event. And Julian's story is awesome. And today we were talking, and he's decided to write a book called The Power of Delusion. <laughs> Tell us about your book. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm, not, so I'm not really writing a book. Um, <laughs> but if I, if I had to write a book, I would definitely call it the power of delusion, right? Um, I, I find myself telling a lot of people who, you know, s- sort of ask me, so how I did what I've done so far and how I've gotten to where I've gotten, um, that they should be confident to the point of delusion, right? Because there's going to be so many reasons to give up, to stop, to not do this, to not do that. Everyone's going to have an opinion of what you're doing, right? Uh, what you should be doing. Uh, but, you know... I guess so, you know sometimes people tr- throw around. Well, how, how do you sift through the noise, right? Like, what, what's what's the true north? And, and I think that it's listening to you, right? I mean, betting on yourself is, I think, the most important thing ever, right? Um, you know, sometimes your 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 own family, your own friends, right? Other relationships, well, none of that pans out. But you're in your own body, right? You're your own person. You're gonna be your own person until you're gone. So right, like you should, one shot. right, right. So you should, yeah. you should definitely, I think, super double down and invest in yourself, and Listen to and, and I think, I think, right, um, it blurs the line between kind of delusion, um, but I think that in order to, in order to do this, in order to beat out the competition, in order to make sure that you have returns for your company, if entrepreneurship is what you want to do, uh, delusion is something you have to like have. <laughs> you got to convince yourself that. Whatever it is you're trying to do is possible, right? So I know your story. Philip knows your story. We've actually, part of being through this ecosystem, you're, you're kind of the poster child of the ecosystem that me and Philip had dreamt up. And knowing part of your story, I remember you, it started from being a safety. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, so right before I came to Scenic, um, well, it was a little bit, a little bit before, right? Uh, so, um, I kind of found a back door into like everything I've ended up doing. Uh, never, ever forgot an invitation to the front door. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, that's probably the Hispanic way. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I guess there's like prettier people in front of me or something. I don't know. Lighter skin. Uh, right? <laughs> but, um, you, you know, uh, pretty much, right? Like, I saw I was a security guard. Okay. Um, and it was funny the way that I found my way. So, I went to Fordham. Went to Fordham University here in the Bronx as well. But you were a security guard first. I was a security guard. And um, I really just, I was kind of like a rover, right? They just sent me to different places. And uh, I just asked them, I said, yeah, listen, I live in the Bronx. Just find me something in the Bronx. And uh, they, you know, they, they said, okay, Fordham University. I was like, okay, cool. I know exactly where that is. I don't know what it is, but I know where it is. <laughs> and I was, like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go. Wait, so how old were you when you were a security guard? Um, so I would have, so I was a security guard from 19 to 22, I believe. Uh, oh, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have made Wait, that career. Wait, that's as you're going to high school? <laughs> 
No, so this was after high school. This was after high yeah, school. I, I didn't go straight oh, to yeah. college. Like, oh, yeah, oh, I, I didn't. Right. I didn't. I didn't go straight to college. Oh, I did not know that. Um, it was. It was more like a side job. I was never a full time security guard. Like I said, I bounced around to sort of wherever they had like uh, extra hours. Uh, it gave me opportunity to sort of see like so. So I've been in uh, J.P. Morgan executive suites uh, as the security guard, right? But <laughs> but you know how, like how they I've expect been, us. <laughs> I've been I've been in sort of places in boardrooms you're not supposed to like be in, all right? Like and sort of see behind the scenes. Um, all you know, because Manhattan has a you know it's a huge opportunity for like corporate security and stuff like that. And I sort of just did it as a side gig uh, in between a bunch of other things that like I was or was not doing. Um, I mean, any 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 job you can imagine under fifteen dollars, I probably did it. <laughs> um, you know, um, just trying to find, I guess, my own way. Um, but you know, I, I will say, I think, you know, we mentioned that we all know each other here, and uh, you know, so me existing and this all happening is definitely not a coincidence, right? It just didn't come out of anywhere, like out of zero, and and sort of made this. It was leveraging these different sort of communities and you know, um, circles, I think of, you know, influence, but also innovation. I mean, you know, Meta Bronx is, uh, so before, so when I was here, it wasn't really Meta Bronx, right? It was, it was, it was. Right, senior, yeah, yeah. Right? It, 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 was, was, uh, it was actually you. You were a developer. We, yeah, you, you had, we, you, you would push this idea that we should start a, a school. Yeah. Like education play where people would pay to take classes, which, you know, in hindsight, like, we should have done that back then. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, so that idea of, of education, yeah, that, that, that was. Yeah, uh, I, I, think there, I think there's a, 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 a energy and a gravity here. Um, and, and, and I love that it was just pro-Bronx. Right? It's in the Bronx. There was no, no excuses about that. Like, you didn't have to, you know, oh, no, we're, we're just in the Bronx on Mondays. Most of the stuff is in the hand, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, this yeah. was this is oh, in the Bronx, yeah. you know? That's yeah. actually funny. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely... <laughs> I, <laughs> I definitely... Um, I definitely just, just definitely gravitated to it. And I think everybody who came here had a lot of experience in their own domain, right? It was a mixture of people, which is what I think is iconically New York City, but more importantly, you know... It's succinctly important to success, right? You you have to be more than just a one dimensional person, and um, yeah, I think I I guess um, going back to the to Fordham, so uh, you know, so so very specifically, so I, yeah, so I'm a security guard, and um, I um, they put me in on the off campus dorms, and you know, so I'm seeing these kids, you know, my age, you know, having the time of their life. <laughs> And um, yeah, guarding them, all right? And and I'm, and, I'm, and, and, I'm, and and then it kind of just hit me out of nowhere. I said, "Whoa, whoa, these kids are not smarter than me, right? There's no reason why I shouldn't be living the way that they live, having the fun that they have, knowing the things that they have." And you know, I sort of kind of got into that college lifestyle, that college vibe. And you know, I I wanted to I wanted to sort of prove that I I could do it too, right? There's nothing to it. And I think I got, I, I, you know, I walked on campus and I just walked into the admissions office. Was like, yo, I, I want to take classes. Um, and I got a little lucky, right? The Jesuits at Fordham University, they're very helpful. Uh, it's a very expensive school. <laughs> right, so uh, there's no way around that. But, um, yeah, I think that they were very like, okay, like, you know, w w you know, the admissions test. Let's, you know, get you in the interview process and everything. And um, it, it worked out. It worked out. I still had to work while I was in school. Um, but there was an interesting thing here, and you know, I, I share this a lot with people who know me. But I think it's important to say, especially now, right, with the political climate and everything, hmm. um, the the specific reason, right? Fordham is like the third most expensive university in the United States. Wow. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. It's a little sense. absurd too. It makes no sense. All right. <laughs> and so, the only reason I was able to stay for the three years that I stayed, right, uh, was because during that time we were in the recession, right? We were right in the middle of a recession, and Obama actually passed a law extending unemployment benefits by two years. So for 24 months, right, I had a, now a fixed paycheck. And, you know, back then I was, what, I was 21, 22, right? And I was getting $400 a week, right? So imagine... 22 getting $400 a week no matter what you did while and while in school full time 
Mm-hmm. Right? This is what allowed me to go full time and stay in school. And Thanks, Obama. You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I will, I will live and die by that. Like, you know, it, it, it definitely changed my ability to, to, to think about a different life for myself, right? Um, so... Yeah, the opportunity. In a way, that's a little bit of a safety net, right? Like, those kids had that in a way without really having it, right? They didn't have to get four hundred dollars, but they didn't have to worry about money, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they could enjoy that lifestyle, right? Right. No, no, no. Absolutely. And 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 you started seeing things like that. I think shift. I think in the social. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I was the best, you know, most disciplined student. <laughs> um, I did a lot of the uh, extracurricular activities one can do sure. on a college campus. There's definitely a lot, a lot of uh, <laughs> those around there. And um, you know, I think um, I think I think it was very I think it was clear that um, you know I, I think maybe some kids probably thought that I was from a well-to-do background uh, yeah, simply because I had you were that there. dispensable you know and and that just like I'd go into a bar and I'd buy pictures for everybody right and like I didn't care because I didn't <laughs> right? like I knew you in knew seven days <laughs> in seven days there was four hundred more dollars like it's it's not gonna stop and so you know that was. Um, that was uh, imagine living like that all the time. That would be, <laughs> like, that would be yeah. I think you know, and 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 again, you get you get a different group of people sort of coming around you. I, I remember there was a kid who used to bartend, and I don't know who he was. He just seemed like a cool guy. But because I was I was able to sort of be myself and not really have to worry about making ends meet or like following you know the strict you know guidelines to not sort of fall off the edge of something. Uh, I I definitely got closer to people um, who were already on that path, right? A path that I didn't really know what it was. I remember, I think his name is Sean. Sean Coburn, I think. Um, and he was the first guy to tell me, he's like, hey, Julian, I love your energy, man, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, send me over your resume, man. I think I could get you a job. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay, cool. I don't really want to work in a warehouse or like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine what kind of job he was talking about. And Sean submitted me for a job at like UBS and the bank. yeah, the bank. Right. And like, you know, New York, right. Like, you know, yeah, uh, uh, you know, it, it was, it was a significant thing. And I just remember thinking like, Whoa, like what made Sean think that I should be working at this bank and I should, I would be the one that he, he would like, you know, recommend, recommend yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, man, I think, you know, when you're finally able to sort of be yourself or, or create the circumstances to be yourself, uh, the positive things that sort of come out, um, are, are, I think, rewarding for everyone, right? And, and, and there's that sort of magnetism. Uh, you know, a lot of people say the law of attraction, right? And I know, you know, we were, we were talking about it a little earlier. Um, it's really, it goes back to the delusional point, right? Like, if you constantly think about something, you're going to, all of your energy is going to be focused on making, you know, putting those yeah. little pieces into place, right? Where if you can imagine in that bar, I was being what I thought was my best self, who I wanted to be and that attracted other people to sort of like oh crap like you know he's giving all of this out to the world what can I sort of give in return uh, at least that's how I think about it right the, mm-hmm. this right now this interview might just be me being delusional right <laughs> about it right now like You're I'm not even here right now. you know like, <laughs> I just I just might be like you know what let me just keep doing this and I'll get this result no but I, I think know? I think in our many many conversations I think that delusional point comes really home when you talk about raising money Mm. and like convincing other people to give you hundreds if not millions of dollars and i think i think people listening this is one of the biggest points that i want you to take and and julian always talks about is when you're talking to investors you have to make them believe as much as you believe and and I, i always like the way you explain it like Tell, tell the audience <laughs> how delusional you have to be and how you have to. And I guess it just maybe just explain, you know, bizarre. Like, what, oh, yeah, what yeah. Is explain it your company. How, what, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How sure. did you actually get the money? Like, sure, sure. So, so how you got to that concept. You know, so, so I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be truthful, man. Uh, when we first started this, sure, we had a, a, a good idea of what a company was going to be. And, and we knew we could execute. We knew we could, be, you know, build a technical product. That's cool. Uh, but we sort of sold an idea that ended up being a little different right, of what Bazaar is today, right? Yes. Bazaar didn't start like this. That's normal. Right? And when was yeah. this? Like, when did yeah. the concept first come about? Um, so, I mean, this goes, this goes really, it goes really far back. I mean, it, it's, it's just a compendium 
of sort of all the experiences I guess I had as being the son of Latino immigrants in the inner city. Um, By know, inner city, you mean Bronx, right? Like right, in the Bronx. You, yeah. Right, the Bronx. Because you grew up in... So, I, so I'm originally from Long Island. I moved to the Bronx uh, right before puberty. Right, so I was like 12. Years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like 12 when I got here. All right, all right. And um, that's a shock. <laughs> it was, uh, but you know, I think, I think, I think it helped me sort of, you know, sometimes I, I say I've seen both sides of the, uh, of the coin, right? Because, yeah, sure, out Long Island, it was the suburbs and life was very different. But coming here, I, I remember the first thing that, that hit my mind when I came here and I saw people who look like me, have the same background as I do. I remember thinking like, wait, these people don't seem any different than the people in the suburbs. Why are conditions here so, so, much, so worse. much worse, right? So much, so much worse off. And then I, I think I just continued just looking for the best in all the people that were around me to the point that the company today, um, everyone, is, everyone in the company is actually from the Bronx, uh, except for one person. Um, and they are from Washington Heights. So nice. everyone else is uptown, right? <laughs> and half of the company are people that I know either from middle school uh, or, you know, several years ago, right? And uh, it was, it, it was, it was, I get, I think my approach of, you know, hey, we need a smart person for this role. I, I know smart people, mm -hmm. right? For that can fill that role. And, and this is why. Things like Meta Bronx exist, right? Because we say when a person of color creates a company, they will hire more people of color. And Absolutely. in a way, what we always look at, and, and we were having this conversation earlier too, is growing up in the hood, right? What you think is hopefully one of our friends becomes a rapper or an NBA <laughs> player so we can go with them, right? But this, what I always thought was technology is a much more surefire way of one of your friends making it. I have way more positions than an NBA player <laughs> or a rapper. Right? Like, what I, 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 I need a lot of people <laughs> to, 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 to contribute, to help out, right? So, so what we have to do is part of why we, we want to uh, show people like Julian is we need to make tech entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship period and things like this cool because growing up, I don't know if it was cool for you, but it definitely wasn't cool for me. Like, I didn't think of entrepreneurship as what I would be doing, right? It wasn't like an aspiration. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, th I, th I think there's definitely a vein in the inner city, right? I remember, you know, there were comparisons between, you know, the sellers and the customers, right? <laughs> and, sellers. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, and, yeah, of course, and, of course. And, yeah. and you know, I, I think... market-driven. <laughs> And and I I think I think that just became I think it was just obvious to me right like yeah but to I wanted me to be that's not side. entrepreneurship to me well you're not selling they they want to buy your product you don't have to convince a crackhead to buy crack you have to sure. convince people to buy your product so you're to right. me that's not a hustler you don't gotta hustle to sell a product that everybody's fucking dying for you're right you're right no 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 literally you know yeah literally, I mean, literally. I mean, yeah. the competition. So I always is, laugh at that. You're not no hustler. The competition is a little different, sure, in what we do. Yeah, I would definitely that's not say hustling. so. <laughs> but uh, but you know, I, I think I think just the fact that it was around, right? I think raw raw commerce, buying and selling, and you know, just I guess protecting and moving your product, um, is still it's still reality, right? Like it, it, it's is I think it's still something there. I think what it really just showed me, because I honestly never ever really, you know, got into that kind of a world. Is because even as a teenager, I just saw like, well, you know what? Your employees are not. No, no, it's not the consequences. Your employees are not that smart. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah, be yeah. want to be affiliated with the group. I don't think you guys are that smart. <laughs> and that 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 was my perspective, right? I just I just never thought I, like. I understand that. You know, I just never thought that they were killing it. Like, nah, you guys are not really. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely I felt the same way, but I mean, I had friends that were smart and chose to be in that world, but I also felt like. I know I I could do more, and one of my parents would kill me because my whole family got murdered by that game, right? I grew up in the 80s. My, all my family went to jail for that, right? So it was like, if I even took a step in that direction, I would have been murdered by my mom. Gotcha. So I couldn't even... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy you didn't do it. <laughs> I'm happy you didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm happy you didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you come back to... Julian raised over a million dollars in his first round and from venture capital money. So 
not everything is venture capital backable, right? So one of the things we always have the conversation about because new startups come all the time and actually Julian has raised money is what makes venture capitalists actually want to invest in a business? So, and, and just before you answer that question, what does Bazaar do? Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> no you're one, right. Up to this point, right. no one knows what Bazaar does. Right. So I just, yeah, I a, just... Lot of, a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of other things. No, because, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's like um, it's an interesting play, right? Like, there's a digitization component. Sure. Like, it, it started in the Bronx... And how, you got, and how you got there? Yeah, yeah, no you doubt. Know, so, so, it's so, like an old school way of doing things. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, yeah. so I'll go a little bit into, I guess, some of my pitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So, um, you know, as an investor, go. <laughs> so, you know, our, so our parents when our parents got here, they weren't vying for top jobs, right? Um, it was pretty much well, we discussed one of the paths. It was, it was one of three paths, right? You're either going to be a taxi driver, something with buying or selling drugs, or you know, good luck. Uh, run your own small business. And so, you know, we, we saw how uh, Lyft and Uber did an excellent job monetizing and digitizing the taxi space. So we thought to ourselves, okay, well, let's do something for the small business owners because if we help other drug dealers, we're just going to go to jail. So, you know, <laughs> digitizing, yeah. Unless you're a big farmer. <laughs> so so let's, let's do something for the small business. And, I, and that's where it really sort of started, right? It was just like, okay, you know, we can build software. Let, let, let's put together something to, to really help them out. And, um, B2B. Right, absolutely, B2B. And I still believe, you know, and I try to tell people, especially in New York City, uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of these sort of B2B micro little industries that you think are little because all you see is a guy in a truck or, 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 or a guy with a hand, you know, hand truck or wheelbarrow, whatever. And they're just like not even the tip. They're like a snowflake on the iceberg of what is really, really the going whole on. The market. Right, it. the whole market, the whole industry, what really moves the planet. I mean... New York City has, I do this comparison all the time, San Francisco, right, which is supposed to be the citadel right, of Silicon Valley and the end point out west, uh, 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 you know, the middle of a $3 trillion neighborhood, supposedly. Um, there's 900,000 people in San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. San yeah. Francisco. The Bronx has 1.4 million, just the Bronx. Right. On any given day on the island of Manhattan, right, Monday through Friday, there are 10 million people standing on it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so yeah. when you really think about the number of resources that it takes for those people, whether it be to eat or even to use the bathroom, the, the actual water, like you can literally make a business that's going to get, you know, X percentage uh, in, in revenue of almost anything. And you're going to say, well, someone else is doing it. Yeah, you, you're damn right someone is doing it because if they're not doing it, there's no business there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you're never going to come up with something that no one's not doing. Right. The 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 the, pro, the point is that we can do it better. We can do it smarter. We can do it faster, and sort of that's what a VC I think wants to begin to hear. So you know, we we mentioned it earlier. A VC is really backing the person that they're talking to, right? Because at the early stage, yeah, there's probably yeah, yeah, there's yeah. probably no they're real that you'll figure it out. Right, right, right exactly. Right. Yeah. There, there's probably no real product. You probably don't really have any users, but. You seem like someone who's really into this. You seem like the right person for the background of it. And, and like I said, coming from this city, uh, addressing any issue in this city, any one of us is the right person, right? Because it's like everyone is here. There's no overrepresentation of any one group in New York City, right? So anyone can say, anyone can say, oh, I had that problem on the train. Fuck, I had that problem at the bridge. I had the problem, you know, uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. right? But, like everyone think, had the problem. But I think your startup, you kind of did hit on something that not everybody right because in the b2b space in the beginning you, you started with bodegas right right yeah 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 so i think uh, so the difference there is there are a shit ton of people doing this but none of them uh, for for some weird reason in 2017 right when we were really picking up traction no one had ever decided to use a website to do it right right yeah <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's insane Even though amazon yeah, yeah. it's insane everything, right yeah, yeah. It's insane, yeah, it's insane. So it's just like, okay, whoa, you know? And, and so our ability to sort of put that up, and then we're just, you know, backtracking, figuring out other, okay, man, how do we take see, payments? How do we do last mile? We're but just but, but see, this, you bring something up, right? It's as simple as they weren't doing it on the web. So most people will think, so how did a venture capitalist back that then? If it's just the fact that 
it was more than that. What was the more that enticed the venture capital? So we definitely did have what we thought. I think, you know, venture capitals are bankers, right? At the end of the day, they love spreadsheets and pivot tables. And like, if you want to impress a VC, uh, you should definitely get your finance friend here in New York City uh, <laughs> or, or someone in finance, maybe pay him you know, a couple hundred dollars to make you a really, really nice, a uh, super aggressive financial model. Right. Projections. So they want to see that they're going to make 10 times their money, even if mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. delusion again. Right. right. Like you, you have to make them believe that I'm, you're going to get this. And you're going to give them back 10 times that. Right. And they, if they believe that, they'll drop that money in your bank account. And again, when you look in hindsight, it's going to be half-assed because you don't know what you're talking about. The guy who made this shit for you doesn't know what <laughs> you're talking about. But you put it together and you know, hopefully this guy would have seen other companies and seen how they represent themselves. And he just was like, okay, well, uh, you know, move uh, DoorDash and write Bazaar. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so DoorDash just raised five hundred and thirty-five million dollars, by the way. Today. <laughs> so, so I think I think that that's that that's uh, a, a a a quick way to sort of get get to them, right? And 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 just show sort of a command over. Hey, I know I know the business. I know my business. I know how we're gonna grow. I know how we're gonna do this. And I think I be, I believe that's why you raised. Actually, I think when you and I, I want you to tell the story about how you the rejections came but you overcame them but i think when people thought who can figure out this space i think they looked at you and your experience and your background and said if anybody is going to figure out this space it's this guy yeah yeah right. i mean i mean okay so right like we walk into so i was in the warehouse today um you still haven't explained what they do you specifically yeah, you're right i i, I don't yeah. so we help small businesses buy from wholesale distributors right so it, it, we we work in the food service industry it's a huge industry it's 400 billion dollars is uh, nationwide it's global it's actually a global thing uh, but in the u.s is 400 billion dollars just food service so these are things that restaurants supermarkets delis bodegas okay. grocery stores sort of buy and um Right, anything on a shelf or anything prepared. Uh, and so we get them to them, right? Meat, seafood, produce, canned goods, Heinz ketchup, graham crackers, anything that people will eat, we, we got it. Because the old way of doing that was... So the current way of well, doing current, it, yeah. there's no old way. They're well, still doing this. You're trying to make it the <laughs> They're yeah. still doing this. So 80% of the entire market is these sort of obscure, unidentifiable warehouses, right? Uh, just a warehouse like here, here in the South Bronx, it's the Hunts Point area, right? Yeah. Sort of east, yeah. uh, uh, southeast of the Bruckner, right? And um, near the food market. Yeah, absolutely. So right, the right. terminal market is, 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 yeah, is the reason sort of everything grew out of there, right? So a lot of people don't know this. New York City has the second largest fish market on the planet. Right, right, yeah. Right, and it's yeah. the one in the Bronx. Is the one, one the is the one in the Bronx. Yeah. And so the first one is in Tokyo, right? Yeah. And so this just speaks about how much shit is moved in and throughout New York City. Right, so boats come through the Bronx. Hunts Point, so right? there's everything. There's everything. There's trucks. there's railroads. There's trucks. Oh, railroads. There's, yeah. It's it's crazy. It's massive. Um, it's like a city of food. And it's twenty four seven. It's twenty four seven. It moves right. all day, every day. Uh, eighteen wheelers in and out of all every single one of those warehouses. Then uh, smaller trucks from one warehouse to another. Right, the basically the food supply chain. Uh, there are like maybe ten or twelve people uh, in between, sort of the 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 production, like the inception uh, of the good, whether it's a farm or some kind of you know factory, to the actual retailer that's going to sell it to you. Right, and so everyone in that chain you know, will touch it and put on you know two points here, three points there, uh, four. So in our particular by industry, by points you mean percentage, percentage, points. right? Like right, right. so, they if, inflate if, the price. If, if, one point, if the the one farm point. sells it for ten, every step in the chain you add like you know twenty two percent, and then you right? Add, yeah, absolutely. Right, absolutely. So eventually you end up for at what like what's that multiple? Uh, so it depends. It depends, right? It, it depends. depends. It could because a, a lot of this has to also do with how fast you want it. Right. Uh, if you if yeah. you need stuff to today today, oh forget about it. You're gonna pay <laughs> yeah. and a leg, right? Like yeah. and that and, you like know perishable. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, right. So so there's a lot of there's a it's a black box and you know Google set out in the early days to organize all the world's information, 
Right? That was their thing. Yes, 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 right. right. And so we kind of want to do the same thing for the supply chain, right? So organize, categorize, digitize, and bring transparency. Like we produ- we produce live pricing. We tell our customers, look, this is the actual price. It will not change. This is the price that we're selling it to you for. Even if we lose money on this number, you bought it. Congratulations. We're we're gonna bring it to you at that price. Right. And yeah, that's a massive difference from the current no system. No one where basically does that. No one. No one. No, no one, one knows what the price is. Well, the price is whatever someone says that you. And, and also, potentially that's like as the the product is getting delivered on the truck. It's changing. You still increasing. don't know. Right. Yeah, so no, no, like from, yeah. from being right. involved so early, I remember people would literally write, "I want ten pieces of toilet paper, thirty sprites." And then they come back and say, you owe $400 or $5,000, whatever, and mm-hmm. you just pay it. You don't even know mm-hmm. what each yeah. item costs. Invoice, yeah. order history, uh, For posterity purposes, but like, <laughs> you know, they, they look at the receipt and be like, okay, I guess. I have, yeah. I've already paid you. There's nothing I can really do. And this is like, how much of this business happens in cash? So the, the 80% of it. Uh, wow. The 80% of it. So there are industry oh, leaders. Yeah, so yeah. There are industry leaders like the Cisco Foods and whatnot. Oh, yeah, huge. Um, right? Massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a publicly traded company. They have 9% market share. The leader in this industry <laughs> has 9% market share. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So competition <laughs> is like out of control. You know, but again, these are people who are just not working as, as smart as we are, not working as fast as we are. These are people who Don't built... the insights that you have, right? The, like, yeah. These are people who built these companies over 10, 15, 20 years. Wherein we've gotten to the point where they're at in 10, 15 months. Yeah, so I, that's, that's, that's like a big part of, of being venture capital backed. Yeah. Right? Scale. Like, like there's, there's, the expectation is, you know, you start with, you know, uh, you know making a, a hundred thousand a year or, or nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 you know, within how, what period of time do you have to get to, whether it's cash in the door or mm-hmm. y- usage. Like, so, uh, so, so, what's you, that expectation? Once you take that first million. Yeah, I would say you, no one, I don't think anyone thinks about breaking even until they run out of money. Right? Okay, yeah. That, that <laughs> like, well, right. Is that what the VCs want to hear? Or um, I, just think that, I, just, I just think that's what happens. I just uh, think okay. nobody's really thinking about right. plan B. And, and that might be the difference between a first time founder. Right and, and a serial entrepreneur, right? Because yeah, they they're yeah. just like, oh, I know the game already. Sure. I'm gonna ins- I'm gonna protect myself at all. T- you know. Yeah. And but but yeah, first time founders. I mean, you know, you're gonna have to perpetually raise money, but no one is going to tell you sort of what 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 to anticipate, what's gonna happen. And when the VCs, raise, right? The uh, VCs are definitely not gonna do it. Um. So you know, I think I think this is where advisors and mentors they say are very very important. I unfortunately got my advisors and mentors maybe a little later in the process, but even when I think about it now, the most crucial points of information were exactly what I just said right now, right? Like where it's like, okay, yo, listen, you need to break even, right? Like just get out of this sort of little game and, and, and break even. Um, so there are a couple of founders and that's why you hear there's some founders who will be like maybe series A and they're like, yo, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to take any more VC money because they just want to get out of that treadmill. Right? Yeah. They just want to get off. They're just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to break even. I'm going to stay like this. Yeah, because once you, once you right. raise, you have to keep raising, right? Yeah, because the expectation, right, is, is, an, exit. is, is an exit. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So, so, so that's uh, part of what's, what's venture backable is are you thinking exit from the gate because these people want their money back, right? right. It's not like, oh, here, I gave you a million dollars. Pay me back when you feel like it. We're talking six years. And, 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 I'll t- <laughs> and I'll tell you guys the truth, and this is, they're probably going to see this and, you know, you guys could judge me however you want, but um, I, I'm game, right? I, I want to build this to an exit just to prove that I can do that. Right. Right. Like, right, I, I just right. want to do it just for that, just to see like, okay, yeah. you know what? Can I really grow this shit to $500 million? Can I really grow this to a billion dollars? I, I, I'm generally just after it for, for that purpose, right? I think that what we're doing is great and I hope that I keep attracting excellent employees, and I hope that they, you know, uh, have fruitful lives from what we do. But besides that, I don't have much more. Like, I don't, I don't, any, any money that I get, I want it to just do something else. I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not really sort of sitting here like, oh man, I can't wait until we get break even. I can pay myself half a million dollars every year and just chill. <laughs> like, I'm, I, you know, I want to see how far we can really go and, and, and make this. And, and because of the size of the industry, I don't think that the cap on that is anywhere near, right? Like close, right? Anywhere close. 
I think we have the I think we have the room to do it. And I think I think when you speak to investors, they understand that. Because I remember early on, I remember you reaching out to a very prominent investor and them turning you down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And what you did with that. Yeah, so uh it was so so here's another thing. So I have a couple of tenants, I guess, that I adhere to. The delusion is one. Uh, the other one is, and I, I, I don't say this to a lot of people cause I just tell myself this uh, and my girlfriend, uh, <laughs> sure, just sure. show up, just show up. Like showing up is the literally yeah. probably the most important thing. Like yeah. you, you don't, you, you don't have to show up with a plan. You don't have to show up with any expectations, but just being there makes a difference. And Every single thing in my life has proved to me that just being there, things are going to fucking change. Because nothing's going to change if you just sit at home, yep. right? Like, yeah. nothing is going to change. You're not going to meet that. You know? right. Yeah. Right. And so I met Phil. I met Phil just by showing up. I showed up to a random meetup group at, at Theodore form. Roosevelt. And we ended up at... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's where he met. Yeah, yeah. That's where he met. was there. And, yeah. and, and Andrew was there, and he was like, hey, I want you to meet this guy. I was like, okay, cool. I was like, yo, this is a cool dude. What are you guys doing? Oh, I'm fucking over there. And, yeah, and, and that's you were how, here that's that same night, right? Uh, like we, we the next Roosevelt's, day. It was the next day. It was the next day. It was the next day. From Roosevelt. The very next day, I was like, I'm there. I'll show up. Yeah. And you were trying to be a developer at that time. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get into a real life project. I was like a junior Rails dev, sort of learning the ropes. And I was like, yo, Phil's making Rails apps. All right, fuck it. Let, let's, let's do it. And, so one uh, of the biggest things I remember is once you got to a point with development where you wanted to go and branch off and do more development, I remember having a conversation with you about your true talent that I thought. I, was, I, I remember saying, look, you, there's a bunch of developers, and I'm not saying you can't make a great living being a developer, mm -hmm. but I do think you have a skill set that's more important. And what happens is if you go further down the development line, you're going to lose the other skill because to be a developer, you got to be more of a hermit on your own. Yeah. But you have the gift of gab and able to talk and sell. So I told you, I think you should challenge yourself to try to sell something more than being a developer. So, so I'll tell you guys, there's, there's a little key th secret there. Before being a security guard, so right after high school, uh, and what sort of put me on to the larger world around me, I was actually a cold caller on Wall Street. Right? So, oh, yeah. You know, they were, these were what you really call chop shops, right? Um, so, boiler, yeah, rooms. Like, whoa, boiler, whoa, whoa. boiler rooms. Boiler rooms in the industry. Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, what, what the, yeah, what the difference is because of that guy, uh, which was like all over, the, like everyone knew that this had happened, and and right, you had to watch out for that. Because of that guy, um, they changed a lot of of rules about what we could or could not say, hmm. uh, and and phone. right on the phone and how we how we could behave. Absolutely, and and even in this was two thousand six. Even in 2006, you could feel it. It was like still there, you know. Um, Jordan Belfort, people people would joke about him and say his name, and I was just like, "Who the fuck is that? <laughs> like, he, like, why do we keep talking about this guy? Like, you yeah, know? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so a boiler room. Yeah, man. I worked for I worked at two separate boiler rooms. Uh, absolutely, E1 and National Security. Uh, so, um, and that's selling. Like, you gotta convince people. To talk to somebody else, right? So, <laughs> so at E1, we were calling internationally overseas. And there's a, even a bunch of more regulations for, towards that. No one cared. Uh, but it was, it was about uh, numbers, right? So you, you're pounding the, the phone. And so they wanted you to call like maybe 200 people in one day. And get somebody that was interested um, enough to sort of pass it over to the senior broker. So lead I, was generation. Be, lead I, generation. Yeah, I was supposed to be the junior broker, which is not true. I was just, we were just cold callers. I was not a broker at all. <laughs> oh, no yeah, licenses, yeah. right? But, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. This deal is so hot, man. You're so cool. You know what? I'm going to pass you to the senior broker right now. So <laughs> you'd ha they'd want that immediate sort of pass off. And I just, I just felt like that was the wrong way to do business. I didn't like it. Um, you know, in my head, again, a little delusion, I thought I was going to show up to Wall Street and I was going to be in front of a computer and thinking of watching graphs and thinking of how to grow <laughs> someone's portfolio and like, you know, strategizing like, oh shit, I get to finally <laughs> use all my brain power 
to you know like do do a really great job and someone will pay me and apparently the fucking world doesn't really work like that uh, <laughs> like, you think? Like, oh, like, i guess it depends who you are and what school you went to and what right you, yeah, yeah. Like, probably. Your last name is and, probably wait so is that what is like that exposure to finance because you got into bitcoin early right i so i did yeah i did yeah um yes yes absolutely so i heard about bitcoin because of like a penny stock mailing list that I, I was on, I was in. Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Know. So the yeah. guy the yeah. guy who owned the mailing list was like a libertarian. And so like apparently these different ideas of how to like hide your money from the government yeah, are like yeah. big amongst the like in that community. Oh definitely. definitely. And so this guy kept talking about this thing, Bitcoin. And you know, back then I was I was into tech because I was young. Uh so Yazer, my co founder, right? Uh he went to City College for uh computer engineering. And, um, you know, so he was always into tech startups and I was like, oh man, you guys are having all the fun and I'm trying to figure it out. And, um, so I remember he got like all excited when like Bitcoin, like went over a dollar. And I remember thinking in terms of penny stocks, I was like, okay, that's cool, but there's just be more. Right. And then I didn't really catch on to the idea that this was not a penny stock. This was like some kind of technical product. And then I think once I caught on to that, I was like, okay, cool. Let me, let me, let me, let me look it up. And I had like, I had like the... Epic, like the Samsung, the first Galaxy, the the first one, and I and they had like a ticker symbol on the the Play Store. So I, I you know, I uh, I downloaded that to follow the sort of the the price on my phone, and like I remember, I remember it immediately sort of tanked, and I was like, oh fuck, okay, I missed the I missed the pump, right? Like whatever, I, you know, uh, next thing. But then it kept sort of coming up, kept sort of coming up. And then it wasn't until really, that must have been like 2011. It wasn't until 2013 that I actually mustered up the courage, right? The, the community was a little more built out, a little more robust. And a lot of it was happening in New York City. And um, I was just like, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to do this. And I think it was, I think it was, it was greed. It was, it was the pursuit of, it was the pursuit of like <laughs> returns. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Yeah. It was yeah, the pursuit of returns. Yeah. 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 And so I decided to one, one up even that, right? Because I, in my mind, I kind of believe that you can be always be smarter, right? You could just always be smarter. So I was like, okay, anyone could buy and sell. Cool. But what's smarter here? Like who's smarter? And then I began understanding the whole mining process behind Bitcoin. Yeah. And back then it was like GPUs were the shit. Yeah, crazy. Right? Yeah. And then yep. literally I was bombarded by, because now I'm, I'm on like GPU miner sites. I was bombarded by mail or, or you know, like ads for, uh, they were moving to specialized machines to mine, ASICs. What I didn't know at the time was these were pre-sales. So, you know, um, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to really get into this. I'm going to do the, the, you know, I'm going to join a presale. There's going to be the crazy come up and I'm going to be the fucking man. <laughs> and, um, I sent, I, I bought $2,000 worth of Bitcoin at, um, $24 a coin. And, um, the machine was $1,600. I kept four and, um, the machine took eight months to get to me from Taiwan. Right. And, um, you know, during that whole time, Bitcoin went to like 120. I was like, fuck, right? Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 that was it. I lost it. He scammed me. Like, he sent me a shit machine. This isn't going to do anything. Like, oh yeah, I, th I thought it was over. So, so I started mining. I, I connect the machine. I started mining all through the summer. And in a 24 hour cycle, it was, it was creating 2.2 Bitcoins at 24 hours. So I was like, as I get this, I'm selling it because I want my money back. In my mind, I'm thinking, I want all the money that I didn't make. In, in the past 10 months, I want, I want it back. So I was, I was selling, I was selling it. Bitcoin keeps, in, well, again, you guys know, Bitcoin today is like $11,000. <laughs> like, you know, you, see, you saw my, the, 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 the account I showed you. So I, at one point I had 200, 200 Bitcoins. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. But he cashed out early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, I made a little bit of money. Uh, no, you did. I, I, I made a little bit of money. I bought a Lexus. <laughs> um, oh, good. Good use of that. That's that Bronx. That's that Bronx right there. Yeah. Wait, so how old were you at this point? Um, So there I was. 24 okay 24 yeah. okay so that's like that whole uh, the idea of speculation is pretty clear there mm -hmm. i mean that's essentially what vcs do just on yeah. a much longer period of time and yeah. more, absolutely. More no. risks absolutely and, yeah. but okay, so it's, that definitely got you well attuned to yeah yeah i think i think because i remember having a conversation with you very early on when you started working here 
and we were you know we were sending emails to VCs I guess for for the glass files and just in general like Bronx companies and getting nowhere um, and you had said you know the, the key thing here is to get to the next round. Mm-hmm. You were like, that's what really matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, you you watch the HBO show Silicon Valley? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I mean, you know, there's this scene where you know the the, the, the Jack Barker is 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 you know his 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 horse is mating. You know, oh yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. in the middle yeah. of the day, two uh-huh. thirty. I gotta go. Like, uh-huh. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, <laughs> and he says, yeah. well, do you know what the product of this company is? And, you know, Richard Hendricks is like, is it me? And he's like, oh, no, no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, it's, it's, it's the shares. Mm-hmm. The product of the company is its stock. And, you know, the goal is to get this stock from being worth this much to that much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so you already knew that, you know. So I, so I spent a lot of time. Way before you started a venture. Yeah, I spent a lot of time understanding greed. Right? <laughs> I, I, I mentioned it here. I spent, yeah. a, lot, I spent a lot of time understanding greed. Um I, I, you know, funny. I, um, this is a little bit, maybe a little bit of a tangent, but I was, you know, I was, uh, I have, I was friends with communists, right? Like literally like people who were like editors of communist newspapers here in America, right? Here in New York. <laughs> and, oh. um, <laughs> yeah. <Edit> that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, you know, different, sort of those kind of different political ideas. And I think I, I, I was, I was very, uh, how can I say guarded against sort of capitalist intentions but being in new york city you can't escape it right like america's never not going to be capitalist this is not happening yeah, right. right and so i decided to figure out okay well how can i at least understand the system if just to avoid it or see it coming or see when it's going to crush me right uh or if not just maybe find a side pocket where i might be a little immune uh and so i think that those things really just became sort of more natural just me seeing it right like because on Wall Street, I'm seeing how these people are talking to other people, mm-hmm. uh, right? I'm seeing how they are revolving door, hiring, firing us, and pressuring us to do things, holding these licenses sort of over our heads, right? Series seven and sixty three, um, and so there was a little bit, there was a little bit, and then at the same time, I, I'm I'm on the very fringe, I'm on the outside, I'm a cold caller at a you know hole in the wall stock brokerage. Right, that's like third tier easily, right? Like <laughs> like nobody knows any of these kind of firms, right? So. Um, I think, I think it was just, yeah, it was just kind of understanding sort of what motivates people. And I think, I think that that's important. That's sort of maybe motivates people with money or, or that want to make a lot of money. I think in general, right? Because it's the same person, even if the person didn't have money, they just wouldn't be able to influence other people, right? Like you wouldn't be going up to them and asking them for advice, but you know, they'd be the same person, but People with money get probably more attention. I mean, in this society, <laughs> they definitely do. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, made yeah. it so yeah. it's like the metric. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it doesn't so matter how how how, how you how, made it. Yeah. 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 So, so I think you know they they see more people and they entertain more ideas. And uh, I think you know, I'm not sure if this is considered EQ or just social IQ, but I think understanding the motivation of, of people in different situations is, is definitely key. Like I said, I I think. I'm very upfront about my motivations. They are kind of seem random, right? Um, and 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 maybe mm. maybe maybe I do that on purpose to just <laughs> make sure that hey, you know, uh, you can't figure out Julian and uh, and again. You're saying while you raise money, like, I'm what? saying in general. I'm saying in general. Like I never did anything specifically to prepare to raise money. And going back, we we spoke about that prominent investor that turned me down. Yes. Um. Right. Uh. I saw. So I don't even know if I should reveal the gender of the person because no, no, that's no, whittling no, no, it down. No, 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 no. But um, don't. you know, um, the, so, so kind of did already. But. Yeah, right. Because like if it was a guy, I wouldn't say anything, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. She, she you know, um, it's a, it, she's a woman, uh, very prominent, very respectful, uh, respectable. Uh, I love her. I love her to death. She's, uh, she was our champion very early on, right, right after sort of the process. But and she turned you down. Yeah, she did. She did. Very, very, very clear-headed, very succinct, immediate response, you know, very involved in what she does. A lot of positive energy there. But but tell people, like, okay, he met her at an event. He emailed I her showed right up. away. Remember, guys, show up. I showed up. I just showed up. the event. You knew she was there. You showed up. I knew that. So, so it's funny, man, because, like, that day, I was supposed to meet someone in Riverdale, and they, like, canceled last second. And then I was like, I'm not just going to go back home, you know, the one train's right here. I might as well just go into the city. 
So I, I just opened up my phone, go to meetup.com, right? Uh, I had the app. I actually have the app on my phone because meeting people is important. It's, <laughs> meeting yeah, people is right, important. Right. And so I have the app and I'm just like, okay, what's going on in New York City today? You know? And I remember I even told, so I, I was at an event last night with our head of accounts, Davey. And I told him, I said, yo, in New York City, you could, you could have dinner every night, every night on someone else's tab by just showing up to events. There's so many events going <laughs> we on know in New York like City. That. We know right? Like, you could just do that. <laughs> and so there were two events. I typed in angels. I knew I wanted to raise money from angels. There were two events going on. One was a six-person sort of thing. One was a one-person thing. I didn't know any of them. So I just said, wow, if it's one person, this person must be really important. Like, these six people... Like, probably not that important. <laughs> so, I paid, I think it was $28 to go to the one-person one. Uh, the one-person one, uh, I was in the overflow room. I didn't even get there. I made up my mind that I was going to chase this woman down after she got off stage. And just get in front of her and get, you know. And this woman, she's smart. She's a veteran. She, right after she finished talking, whoop, she just dipped. Yeah, yeah, she just yeah. dipped, right? But like the back door <laughs> through the side. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny because I thought like, oh, wait, I, I'm, I'm next to the side exit. So anybody who comes through, I'm here. Nope, there's another side door. <laughs> and she went through there. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I remember I spent, I was like, man, how can I find this person? You know, how can I uh, get in touch with them? And... Some weird thing was I never checked their blog for their email. She she has her email in her blog. Oh, They're yeah. like just right on her website. Like, it's about me. The first it's not even her name. First thing is the email. And for some reason I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it for like five days. I'm like, you know, losing my head here. And then That's I funny. finally, I'm like, they're like, you know, and the people say like, you know, people say like the, the bullshit, like, you know, oh, ask around, find someone who knows someone. Like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, what are the chances yeah. of that really happen? <laughs> like, if you don't know someone, the chances of you finding someone that knows that person in an adequate amount of time, you know, and the validity of that intro, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so that's another so, sort of self-serving sort of mention, right? That what purpose does it serve? No, like, I mean, th you're better off just telling people, you know, listen, try, try this other strategy or do this, maybe push a little harder or something like that. Uh, so anyway, so I got her response back and it was a no. It was very, it's very short, like um, interesting, but not really for me or something like that. Which a lot of people hear, and that ends the conversation. What he did next was the real thing that I think. It was a Sunday. I was sitting at in my apartment. I had bought a startup table. It was like a, you know, like the table in Silicon Valley. It's like a six foot <laughs> by four foot sort of just plywood thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I put it in front of my TV in my living room. So I, uh, and my girlfriend was pissed. We didn't even have a couch. I moved the couch out of the living room. It was just the table, the TV, and my chair, a folding chair. And this is where I, like, I was living out of, right? Because I was like, yo, if I'm ever going to watch TV, I'm going to do it in front of my computer while I'm doing work. Right? Like, I'm just going to do everything here. And so it was Sunday, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, yo, we have no money. We had already quit our jobs. We're you know, in this. I was like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Like, there's no way I'm going to take no for an answer. And then I couldn't believe, I guess I, 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 built, I built the person up in my own mind to think that they were intelligent. And I said... There's no way that with all the facts around this fucking industry, this really smart person is not going to get it. So you know what? Let me be specific. <laughs> and my response was to write like a lengthy five paragraph reason why. And it was about the industry, about competitors, the average spend, like every... The place you were at, how much they made. Right, right, right. Where, where, we, where we're from, our backgrounds, everything all in one email. And within three minutes on a Sunday... She responded, and she goes, uh, great, uh, stop by my office tomorrow. That was it. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, you sort of hear about a lot about, like, hey, are they testing you and this and that? I don't know if that's true, but... Um, yeah, I mean, to me, I do, I do think that that is a barrier, right? If, if they always say this when you hire salespeople, right? Don't hire a salesperson that takes no for an answer, right? So if you tell a salesperson, yeah, you're not hired... And they don't fight for the job. They're not going to fight for your product. So in a way, that. it is a barrier to check. I don't know if she really wasn't interested or she was really testing you, but I could see both options very, mm -hmm. <laughs> very mm -hmm. likely, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it worked. And then what I do think that's interesting that people that are trying to raise money should understand is what happened next. So, so right. So, so this person then, 
a very integral figure in the tech ecosystem here in New York. And uh, they began speaking to other people. And so this goes into one of those other principles that I live by, um, that when you're running a company and you're, you're hiring people and you're trying to achieve a goal, there are just two key things that I think are the most important ever. And it's enthusiasm and momentum. There's nothing else that matters. There's nothing else that you can do. If, if you're, for example, if your employees come in every day and they're not enthusiastic about being there, the capital that you lose is, is tremendous, is in- incalculable. Because they begin to affect other workers. They affect your work cycle. Mm-hmm. You, you don't learn. You can't iterate. Right? And that kills momentum. If you don't have momentum, you can't do anything. You can't be your competition with no momentum. You can't raise funds with no momentum. Right? The whole idea of FOMO, right? fear of missing out, uh, that's all momentum. That's all momentum. If you're talking to one VC, another one, another one, another one, uh, and then you threaten to go across the street and talk to another guy, uh, you're going to get term sheet. There are going to be results, but there has to be momentum. That's a key thing. Wait, wait, don't skip by that. I think that's another thing that you did well that I don't know if a lot of people know to do or you just did it instinctively but it's sales right at the end of the day putting people against each other whether it's true or not you have to put them in a situation where they have FOMO like if if you think this is the next big startup and it costs you this is the cheapest you'll ever be able to get in and if he convinces you through the delusion that you do want to back me right now that's where that's how you got the first set of money. And and if you break down the chunks, right, if he raised over a million dollars, but it wasn't one check. Mm. He had to convince how many people? So in total we've raised money, I think, from twelve different people. But now you're way over a million, right? Yeah. So yeah. so but in that first round. So the way that's, it normally yeah. works is you have to get a lead investor, right? So in that woman, she was still not the lead she investor. She wasn't. She literally told us, I'll put in money if you find a lead. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's a vote of confidence, right? Sure. Because people. But you hear that it. a lot. People, a lot of people looking for money. That's, yeah. That's the, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. common. Answer. So, so, so what I've what I've noticed is you call, you consider that a soft circle. You soft circle them, and I get you know everything is jargon. If you're an engineer, you talk an engineering jargon. If you're a military person, you talk a military jargon. If you're raising money, you talk in VC jargon. And so they probably want to like I guess they probably. When I would write an email or talk to them and be like, we've soft circled 400K or whatever it is, to them it seems like, you know. You know the business. Uh, right, right, right. And so soft circle is kind of like, well, the person was either too nice or too scared to say no, right? Or but they really I, but, would if somebody bigger came right, along. Right? But I know that they have that kind of money and that's what they're willing to sort of commit. At the end of the day, if you get a yes, if you get a term sheet, they, they, they're going to do it because everyone kind of would do it. Right, like everyone. It's kind of peer pressure. It, 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 investors, most investors are followers. They're not leaders. So, so that's right. a big thing you find if you're raising money. I say in like a hundred percent of the startups we've dealt with, somebody tells them, "I'm in." If you find a lead, finding that lead is the hardest thing, right? So she had a into a lead that you had to convince. So this is th- th- this is. <laughs> Well, so I, I, I kind of, I mean, any anyone who knows New York Google City it. Tech yeah, yeah. can figure out based on what I'm saying. But, you know, so this is where Fordham University kind of comes into play. This person uh, was an alum at Fordham. I don't know if that matters, but there's a connection there, right? Trying really, really hard in New York City, this person knows what that means, what that looks like. Um, you know, um, I think the, number, the, the thing that sticks out in my head, I've told the story maybe only once, really, uh, I had several meetings with this person, and this person is in an, an interesting location yeah, where yeah, yeah, right. there's a there's a, 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 a drawbridge right before you get to, to, to his office. And um, we had this sort of like one of our final meetings, and uh, I, had, I had been a little late before. And I, didn't, I was not going to be late this time. And I get there, bro. I get there 15 minutes ahead of time. I'm taking my time. <laughs> yeah, right. And as I'm walking, you hear the bell, ding, ding, ding. I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. No, man, I'm 15 minutes early. It's no problem. Right? The, the bridge goes up. I actually, I went into the store, got some chips. I'm eating my chips. I'm seeing a lot of people sort of lining up, right? Like a lot of people, I'm like, yo, how long does this take? I'm looking at my watch. I'm like, oh, it's been 10 minutes. I got five more minutes. Okay, maybe this will come down. It's two more minutes past. I got three minutes. I'm like, fuck. 
this shit is not going down. <laughs> like, this is not, I didn't even see a boat. There was no boat that came. Like, yo, they're just fucking with me, right? And I'm literally looking for an operator. Maybe I could, like, fuck you, right? Like, curse him out in, in the air, tell him to, what is, I could not figure, like, why was this bridge suspended? Um, so, dude, I had no, in my mind, I'm like, yo, I have no choice. I just had to run around. And I'm thinking, like, it can't be that bad. I used to go to the gym before. Like, I could do this. Before? The around was, like, ridiculous. Like, this this is, a, this is a run I would have never, ever done in my life. Like, it just didn't make sense. Long story short, I ended up running around. And when I come back, it had gone down. And all the people that are standing on the other side were now beginning to cross. And they saw me. They was like, yeah, man, you should have just waited. And I was just like, I, 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 I was sweating, sweating bullets. I was just like, okay, whatever. And I, I, I run upstairs and I open the door. I knock on the door. They open the door and go, hey, like super normal. And it's like, I felt like they definitely knew that that happened. I was like, yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, the drawbridge was up. He's like, yeah, we know. And I was like, uh, okay, can I use your bathroom? And I kind of like, 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 but I, I think that. In my mind, right, at least the story I'm telling myself is that if he knew that I was willing to run all of that just for a fucking meeting, <laughs> right, yeah. I was probably not going to let go of a client or a customer or, or an opportunity for a partnership or even maybe another investor, right, to join in on the round. Hmm. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I think it's maybe little things like that where you just, again, you show Prove up. Prove that right, you're, you're fighting. Show up, them. be enthusiastic, use momentum. And oh yeah, always have your best foot forward. I think you know, I, you, you know. I used to at that time. I listened to like this little thing from Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like a montage, right? With like a oh, yeah. nice, you know. And 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 yo, that guy was he did a great job of like forming his own mind around who he was and how he wanted to be the best. And probably that's the reason why Arnold Schwarzenegger was the best. There were people who looked better than him. This kid in Brooklyn and everything. Right? The guy who played the Hulk? Yeah. F uh, yeah. Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. Ferrigno. Yeah. Lou Ferrigno had a better body than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. He had a better body than him, but Schwarzenegger was the man. Right? He was number one. He was the guy. Right? No matter what his charisma, his energy, whatever it was, he was the man. And Schwarzenegger has a philosophy around the things that he feels and thinks about himself. I mean, the guy became the fucking governor of like the second most influential state in the country, right? Yeah. Like, they, yeah. like he he gets what yeah, he wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he married a Kennedy, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, an Onassis. I mean, right? Um, so like he 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 gets he he gets what he wants, sure. and um, I think it has more to do That's that delusion, mental. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, it is. Absolutely, it is. And and a lot of what the montage was used to say was like, um, you know, don't don't think about who. Um, like what role you want to be in. Think about who you want to be, right? As a person, right? And sometimes I sort of see myself as my as an individual, like the best image of myself, right? And you project that absolutely, right? Like how can I fit into that role that I feel about myself, right? And because that's gonna make me demand more of myself all the time. Every time I wake up, no, you know what? Uh, yeah, I I, I had a smear a, a, a toothpaste on my cheek. Next time I brush my teeth, I'm just not gonna be that sloppy because I'm not a sloppy guy. Right? I'm not a. I'm holding myself to sort of a a, 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 a higher standard. And and in just and I think in just everything. And I think you know there 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 are just maybe some little rules like that that I think you could just some tweaks because even running your even running the company is all about tweaks. Today I sat down with my team. We looked we looked through KPIs on the sales side on the operations side, right, and. We noticed these are like little incremental tweaks. They're not yeah. like these shit was weren't like, yo, we're about to change the company yeah, and yeah. I'm hiring a million other dudes. You guys suck. Like it was yeah. it was it's nothing like it was like, yo, you know what, guys, really, we could just kind of do a little bit of more of this and that. And if you guys need help, let it let me know. You know? And I think that that is really like I, I had a I, I did a program at Stanford uh last summer and um it was about scaling, right? And um the most now so this is my quote this is totally theirs but i think it's super super key and i hope i say it right because delivery is important with this with this like with this line steps, one step. yeah man yeah absolutely man when they were talking about scaling what it is what it really means they said scaling is taking a thousand customers one foot instead of one customer, uh, one customer a thousand feet hmm. yeah right <laughs> And if you start thinking like that, it changes the way. And and that's what I'm saying. It's it's little increments. It's a 
you know, I think there's like an NFL thing. Coaches would say it's a it's a game of inches. Yeah. So 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 so, so Mike, my operations director, told me that. Yeah. Like, right, the game of inches. And, and I think and, and, uh, and I think that also comes back to what's venture backable, right? Because that scale, like if you can think of a business that can do that, investors will invest in that. But if it's something that takes one person a thousand steps and investors like it's a waste of my time mm-hmm. i'm never gonna mm-hmm. get a billion dollars off that right no, so absolutely. that's where it's like if and, and i guess if you're listening to this research that more because i know if you're thinking how do i start a clothing line and do that it's going to be very difficult you have to figure out efficient ways to do something different to make it venture backable and that's the type of thing that um julian was able to do so how, if there's any advice you can give someone right now who's trying to raise money, because right now we're we're supposedly in one of these sweet spots where there's a lot of people who want to invest in minorities, women, and you're going to hear a lot of that. And, and any advice for anyone specifically, but, but especially people that look like us and women that are raising money right now? I'm going to say something maybe a little controversial because generally I think that that's how I feel. And I think that this is the best advice for founders or entrepreneurs. I would say don't waste a, too much of your time and don't sorry, overcommit to getting money from uh, investors who say that they're going to commit to, you know, uh, gender or, or, or for racial reasons, even if those people are from that background. Right. Um, I'm not trying to make it harder for investors of color or, 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 or women investors out there, but I think that they should be doing more of a job reaching out to founders of color and women, right? Um, how many How many of your investors are of color? Two. And what color? Uh, so one is Middle Eastern descent and one is African American. Okay. So out of 12? Out of 12 right now. So you have no Hispanic? Nope. And there's all these funds out here? Nope, not one. You have one black, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern. and nine white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so. Right. You know, I think. Um, and, and the model is proven, right? Like you, you're to the point where you're almost to break even. Yeah, so, so you know what? As a matter of fact, you know what? I, 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 so, so l- l- I guess l- let me backtrack a little bit. I'll be, I'll be sort of clear about how that worked out. It was definitely taking money from anyone up front. But I didn't expect necessarily, you know, a minority fund to sort of invest some of their money in me, right? Because we were pre-product, we were pre-revenue, we didn't, we yeah. had a, a financial model, a uh, PowerPoint, and uh, a polo with a smile, right? Like that's that's. <laughs> we what had a developer too, right? No, and a co-founding team was strong. Exactly. I think we did de- did have a strong team. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think with, uh, you know. <laughs> I think it wasn't until this sort of bridge round that we had that I decided, okay, now we have traction, right? Now we're now we're positioned, strategically positioned, and you know we're doing over 200k in sales every month, and now is the time where I could be like, yo, listen, you know, I want to make you guys rich. I want, I want, I want, I want you guys to, you know, partake in in, in this round and everything that I'm doing. And ironically, man, like. Every single, every single one of them that I spoke to <laughs> said no. Like every one. Every single minority. Yeah. In, in, in my bridge, the every single one, every single one. It's crazy. Um, and you, you spoke know, to all of them. And yeah, that's what I targeted every single one. Of them. I'm not gonna name them. I'm not gonna name. I'm not gonna you name. Spoke to all of them. Like all <laughs> of fucking them. All of them. All of them. No jokes. All of them. Um, and you know, and I was there, bro. People, you know, can't even say that I wasn't there. I mean, you know, um, oh, I've seen, I've seen it. I've never seen it. <laughs> Andrea, Andrea Hoffman does an excellent job with her culture shift weekend, and I was there. The culture shift weekend, I was there all three days. I was there. I met everybody, and um, you know, I think I th- there have been a lot of a lot of really good individuals. Uh, shout out to Tyson Clark at Google Ventures. That guy's the man. Um, you know, but I think you know, you have to be. Uh, there's there, there there's there's a lot of support sort of at the top, right? But again, I think that the, I think that getting over that threshold. So so and, and I told you guys, I told you guys, one thing that I was surprised, right? I've been to California now more times than I actually care for, um, right? So Palo Alto, San Francisco, and I am shocked. I'm amazed, happily amazed, at the sheer number of African American founders that I see. 
I would say literally from the people that I'm looking at and randomly bumping into, half of the people I see are actually African American founders. Half? Half. Half of the people that I'm bumping into, half of the founders, is a lot out there, man. It's a lot. And I'm not targeting like minority places. Like yeah, I'm not showing up to like hip hop night at the tech house, right? Like I'm not like you know that's not like I'm not, I'm not going to these kind of you know NBA yeah, night. Yeah, like I'm, that's not what I'm doing. And I, what I will say, unfortunately, is they don't seem to get over that hump, right? Why? They don't seem to be Why making. Do that I don't know. I haven't had the time to sit down and, and talk to them. You saying raise another round? Raise a one round period. See, right? Raise see, the first yeah. round. That, that, that's where um, this is why I, th- this is so important because I think there's there's a few things. There's definitely not understanding the take no for an answer thing, like you were able to figure out. Then I do think there's a lot of investors not believing they're capable, right? Which is partly why again we have to show. Anybody like you that has done it has to kind of give some of their playbook out because what's happening is I think a lot of people just don't know the way to do it. And I don't think it's just that people are smarter or not. It's just they're not playing the right game. They just don't know how to play the game. The well, right I way. mean, wait. And they the don't networks. even have access to the game. But, but Right? Like, yeah. just like. Well, well just, access because the people don't believe they can do it. It's not like they can't uh, go to these meetups. Access because it's, you know, hundreds of years of. of of literally o- o- oppression. Sure. So then from, it always comes back to the same idea, right? Like you have group A and group B and you treat, I don't know yeah. how many times I've said this on this show, but <laughs> yeah. you have group A and you have group B and you treat group A a certain way and you treat group B much worse. And then you look at the results of group A and group B and you're like, oh, group A did a lot better than group B. They must be better. Right. But it's like, yeah, but <laughs> you, you, if, if, who knows what would happen if you treated the Group same. B the, the, the same? The problem with all of this is that there's literally like a million things that come down to like one person's decision in a funding process while starting a company, right? So like, I would definitely say that that's totally true. That's totally real. But at the same time, we could also say kind of like it might, you know, I've seen some founders of color, not all. A lot of them are solo founders. Right. Yeah. A lot yeah. of them are solo founders. But, but that's because and that's, I think they yeah, just don't. They, as far as from working with startups in the Bronx, minority women-owned startups. You, if you're not in that context that teaches you these things by osmosis, literally, how are you gonna find that out? You have to be but I also, extraordinarily driven to go under. But that I don't even think it's only that. I think it's the safety net, the missing safety net, right? Because yeah, I mean, how likely is it to find yeah, two people to take this thing. risk? That's another thing. Sure. And yeah, not no, make I, money for the first two years and yeah. X Y Z. I have, I have, and I think you yeah, guys can yeah. agree. Uh, I have an uncanny ability to my. My risk tolerance is like up here. Right. 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 And I don't think that that's normal. I always knew that it wasn't normal. Um, and I, you know, I, I always thought to myself, well, that is maybe a little bit unfair that if, if, if you wanted to be a sort of rock star, you know, bang it out, uh, founder, entrepreneur, as a person of color, you had to maybe potentially risk homelessness and not, not, not maybe, not right. right. <laughs> and, 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 and not the cute kind of homelessness where it's like, Oh, you know, Hey, I crashed at the office, AOL's office under a table. And then, Oh shit, they caught yeah. me. And I went back home. Like not that kind of cute home. I mean, like, Bronx I mean, streets. right. I mean, I, I mean, I mean like that kid, there was a kid, right. He used to make bow ties and like slept under the train or something like that. And he fucking hung himself. I mean, I mean like that, right. Like, I mean like, like people who are really like, Whoa! There's no way for me to get back from this. I'm really, really fucked up, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, what's the process of even rebuilding my life, yeah. right? And and so that's another thing, right? Like where, as opposed to white founders, they get second chances, third chances, fourth chances. Minorities don't even get first chances, right? So it's so just too devastating. That, the loss yeah. is just too huge. It's crippling. Yeah. Right. Like if 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 I fell off earlier, right? Um, I would have to think, man. Well, is my reputation as Shot. an operator or as an executor done? Can I even get another a respectable chance, job? Yeah. Fuck a chance. A respectable job. Could, could I even maybe go do biz dev for another startup? Will they even trust me at that point? Oh, right? well, they would. 
actually. Well, but he's saying he's saying. <laughs> but if, but there's the risk, right? If like he there's, failed, there's yeah, the, if he failed earlier, right. it might not. Have. There, 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 there's saying. still that psychologically uh, in my mind. Well, if you raise money there, in, you know? at all, this is the big thing. If you raise money at all, somebody's gonna believe in you again, right? Hopefully, so well, uh, hopefully, absolutely. Yeah, we go back to this 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 concept of of this like superhero culture, right? Like if if you that's true are from the circumstances that you're from or you're from, then th- your performance has to be completely insane yeah. compared to, you know, someone like me who, well, I mean, just a lot of my peers, you know, they, 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 they kind of just followed the path rather than, if, if you, if you have a, a desirable path already with, you know, mostly by complying with what people are expecting of mm-hmm. you. Um, it's 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 beyond the safety net, like it's it's a whole culture. Sure, right. Like it's, it's, it's the, the same. Way of, safety it's a way of life. It's a way of life. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a safety it's, ecosystem because uh, everything is built. It's a to life. Keep you really, it's a yeah. nice life. I mean, you see it in the education system as well. Like you know, with the glass file, since we dive deep into the curriculum, you know the the idea of this common core, right? Like there's these certain directives that you know going through high school middle school high school you have to to meet these requirements but when you look at the requirements they are and the way it's put is they're culturally insensitive <laughs> right? because it's like it's like it, 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 you know let me give you a concrete example in France where I'm partly from the curriculum teaches all these kids like 15% of whom are at least maybe it's 20% now of whom are either of North African descent so they're, they're just not white and or 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 uh, West African descent like right? Senegal like former colonies of, of, of France basically and what they learn in school is uh, our ancestors the Gauls so like you know like Viking style people with sure. blonde hair mm-hmm. right Blood. That's not their ancestry. Like, <laughs> end of story. <laughs> you know, there's no way. So they're French, right? They have French nationality, but they're being taught like... Th- th- White guys. Right, right. So, so culturally insensitive. So as soon as you have that system in place, you, you, you can't really learn by, by osmosis, right? You, you, you don't learn just by, funny enough, just by showing up. Like you, mm-hmm. you, you have to go so far. The delusion part. Understand. Yeah. It's the delusion part. It has no to doubt. kick in. Like, I mean, it really just be delusional. It, right? you, like, it has to be, up. right? Like, and I, mean, I don't think that's just in startup. I think, I think it's in entrepreneurship, period. Startup, to, so there's, there's small business and there's startups. I, we talk about this all the time. Like the things that we try to do on a daily basis, like why would we think this is even possible? It's like retarded that we would think. Oh, yeah. Right? So in the startup for form when you take a million dollars right you have to think about the pressure that that creates on the founders to do something with that million dollars because it's old money right you have to create a business that generates more than that million dollars to pay the people back when you take that million dollars like how do you you know rationalize that like the fact that you could lose it um, so I knew we were going to lose it and we did. We ran out of money <laughs> oh, so pretty you, fast. Right. We ran out of money pretty fast. I mean, uh, the reality I think is, and it's important, I think to tell, you know, potential entrepreneurs, a million dollars is actually not that much money. Yeah. Like it it's, just sounds it, like it's, a lot. It's, it's, it's not a lot of money. Um, a tech team in and of itself could easily take half of that. Right. It, if, it, 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 right. Right. You know? And so if there are multiple components to your business, then you're really fucked. Right. Um, <laughs> And so I think we, we ended up we ended up pivoting and expanding the different services in our business and it demanded more money. And and, and what, when I heard you guys talking, there, there's a funny little thing there. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Every single investor from our that first round told me that I most likely was not gonna be able to raise money at a higher valuation, that this is probably gonna have to be a flat valuation. Because of the first deal? Because of I just I don't know. I think because of just they just they're Either their own personal insecurities, maybe you know, unhappiness so with me. That, explain or... that to the audience because they may not know what a flat round means. Right. So we raised our initial money that we brought in was at a three point five million dollar cap, 
right? And for all intents and purposes, let's just say $3.5 million valuation. Right. That right? means the business, after he took the money, was worth $3.5 million. Right, 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 right. So, um, well, so actually, so it would be it would be considered pre-money, actually. Right. Yeah. yeah so, so because well, the <laughs> little thing little is, more complicated. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, so the money is, disappears, and but the 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 the, the oh, yeah. base value is apparently on paper three point five million dollars. Yeah. The shares are worth that. Yeah, and so, sorry, and so um, so what ended up uh, you know, so what ends up happening is. Okay, now we start generating revenue. We start hiring people, start moving products, start getting users, et cetera. So we get to, again, over $200,000 in sales. A uh, month. Per in month. one month. In one month, yeah. And um, I'm like, okay, this is definitely a fucking more valuable company than the PowerPoint that I fucking submitted <laughs> right? like to you guys 12 sure. months ago. So, yo, this should be a no-brainer. Right. And... Um, when just just in talking about going out to raise more money, it was just it was I think it was it was a little amazing. I think that they're, they're they're talking about the climate. I think I think that they feel like VC has changed a little bit, and it probably has. I think it's harder to raise money now, uh, but the ones that raise money will raise more. Right, right. Uh, Once you've raised, I I, I think that I think that raise that's whatever raised. Is right, more. they're gonna give you more money, but I think it's a little harder, and I think that has to do with a lot of VCs having gotten burned in the past. Eight years, ten years, whatever it is, yeah, uh, a lot less exits. So this is a fact. We know that there are less IPOs actually occurring, uh, and then I say that there's less diversity of sort of ideas. I mean, I think there are a lot of ideas happening in machine learning and AI and VR, and we know that right, like super high, high, high tech stuff. And I think that we're losing maybe some deal flow, right? Some some conversations with VCs because of that. And I don't have a problem with that, right? Like, if there's some super smart machine learning company out there that you as a VC have to put your money into, then I, go do that, yeah, man. Like, sure, I got, sure. you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Yes, it's, it's, you know, that's it's, your it's, thing. It's hot right now. Right? That, yeah, that's yeah, your yeah. thing. That, you know, that's what you're into. That's what the, the fund is. You can get all the partners into and, you know. Uh, so we have a very specific group of investors, marketplace investors, e-commerce, yeah. so you know, so supply you chain. So you find people who are used to investing in this type of thing? Um. So I don't, I, I try to do a mix, but the ones who end up getting involved are the ones that are into that. They already know. Yeah. So because, the so, to some extent, yeah. Part of why that is, is think about it. If you're going to put money into something, you're going to put money into something you understand, right? If, Ideally. If, and, and you can potentially help, right? So if I'm going to throw money into something I've never even interacted with, that's much more risky than something that I'm very, very good and, at. And I think VCs in the Northeast are known for sort of that, right? Um, there are VCs here in the Northeast that invest in like restaurants, um, ice cream companies, sure. you know, laundromats, like things like that, right? But it has to be sort of a different twist, maybe a little bit of a different twist. Maybe not even like super, super out there, you know, super venture scale. But, you know, I think about Amazon. Right. And so yeah. Bezos raised a little bit of money back in the day uh, to sell books online. Right. And uh, actually, what did he start? He didn't start selling books, did he? Yeah, it was books. It was books, yeah. It was books. In like mm -hmm. 1990, right? Right. Right. Like and, so, and so you can see today, with everyone's money, this <laughs> motherfucker goes and does crazy <laughs> shit. Right? Like, yeah, like yeah, things yeah, that yeah. other companies should have probably done. Mm -hmm. Other people should have founded those ideas, and he just went in and, and did that. So, so I think it might be just more of a, you know, let me, let me do what I know I'm good at, what I could do right now. And then, right, your career as an executive or as a founder is infinite as long as you continue to turn a moderate profit. Right or well, well in right? Amazon's case, they didn't even do that. Right, and that's that's an interesting thing that I I, th I think I think people should definitely understand that. From what I understand, they didn't even make a profit until they lowered like on the public uh, public, right? But that, the reason why is they kept reinvesting in shit like right. Yeah, I mean, it's right. still right. And just go back to this point about the ecosystem and this ability for people who are funding. Amazon to see very long term. Yes, yes. Not expect a seven to ten years. years exit. Say, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, it's more than years. twenty. And, and and AWS, which is by far the most profitable part of that business, 
Like, there's just no comparison. That's a $10 billion company in and of itself, AWS. Mm-hmm. And that started because they needed internal More tools. More servers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they developed internal tools for themselves. They didn't even develop it as a business. So yeah. to that point... But like, that's innovation. Let, you know, that's, that's spending money right. on well, scale. That's, 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 and, and that's the... Um, to that point of, you know, write me a check and let me do let what me I do. Let me figure it out. Right, like that's what happened with Amazon. I just sure. think access I just, for people the, from the South Bronx to those kinds of investors. Yeah, is yeah, like you'll zero, never see a Snapchat zero here, right? Where they can go four years without making a dime, then turn on ads, right? Like stuff like that doesn't happen. And I don't think it's just in the Bronx. I think it's this is a very common minority and women like thing, right? Where yeah, yeah like, and I, I think it's even it's a Silicon Valley thing. You know, where, where there's so much, like they've been doing it for what, 50 years now mm-hmm. over there? Fairchild, Semiconductor. 40, yeah. Right, so they, mm-hmm. they, 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 they have an entire system that, that I, I would say, I would is say organized around this. It is on the founder to be a little astute, right, um, as, as well, right? Like um, you have to be ready for like, oh, so when an investor sort of corners you into something like, oh, it's not going to work because of this. You know, I, I remember, I remember, Almost all of my investors, now that I think of it, in the first, in that first round, would literally say shit like, uh, literally the same thing. They'd say, you know, you don't have to have all the answers. And I remember thinking mm. like, like, Whoa, what? Like, <laughs> like, I'm just answering your questions, right? And they ended up investing, right? Like, like this is not the reason, like, they, they, they ended up investing. So I sometimes wonder what that really means, right? Like, how did I, how either, am I taking it the right way? Or is, is that speak about a little bit about how they've interacted with other founders, right? Where maybe they were convinced that I felt like I had the answers. But again, this is a delusional mindset. I had made up the world in which a bazaar is the most successful company in the space. And that's the world that I live in, right? <laughs> like, like, like Cisco, you guys ain't shit. Thirty billion dollars, man. You guys must really be fucking up, right? Like to waste thirty, right? Man. Like, like you know. And so I don't, I you know when I when I talk about things or you know, I don't. I'm I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. This is this is what yeah, I but, see. What you right, right. This is this is what this is what's real to me. That's very powerful. You know, um, and yeah, so I guess yeah. that that's. That's advice for yeah. any founder, really. Yeah, a- a- entrepreneur, like founder of anything, because at the end yeah. of the day, a lot of times there's ups and downs of entrepreneurship, more downs than ups. Yeah. And really? if you can't, in those down days, believe like, no, this shit is going to turn around, whether it's not or it is, you're going to be disappointed and depressed a lot. <laughs> we, we've come to near fatal death. In the past 18 months, maybe three times. Like, literally, like, hey, yeah, you know what? We're, money's not going to be... There's no money going to be left in the bank, like, tomorrow. Like, <laughs> like, like literally. And I, I, I feel happy to be able to say, you know, and this is a common thing you hear a lot from startups, but I, I'm happy that, to be able to say I've never actually missed payroll ever. Like, all of my employees have always gotten paid. Um, I, you know, I've, I, I've cut my salary. We've moved money around here and there. Had to maybe lay off a couple people, but as a whole, I've never, I've never missed payroll, and um, you know, like literally ca- came right down to the to to the edge, where like if the money was not wired that day, we were fucked. Like it didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I didn't pay payroll. Like we weren't like like it was we, not just payroll. It yeah, was we yeah yeah. It was it was what we owed other companies we were buying from, and so like. It was. It was just. It was just gonna be bad. And I would. I would wonder, sometimes, how my people in my company saw that. Like, what did they see happening? I remember, we had to move out of uh, our the co-working office. Sp- uh, the office space that we were in, and unpacking things and everything. And you know, we got a little lucky. We were able to stay, but that was pure happenstance. I, we were. We were ready packing. We were like, hey, heads down, like, man, oh my god, this sucks. Like, it's over. Like, the, we that was like actually happening. And so sometimes I kind of wonder what what other people in the company felt because, like me personally, I wasn't gonna like. And 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 you gotta have some doubt sometimes. So 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 I would not advise this to any founder. Don't definitely do not do this. But <laughs> definitely I, do that. At home. <laughs> I I ended up borrowing money, a lot of money. I've never I've never had access to that kind of money ever in my life. And I borrowed money and gave it to the company just in order to, to get over the hurdle. Oh, you mean personally? Yeah. 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 
And again, I've done that. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I like and, and it's pretty common. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and we're not no, supposed to, do right, right. That. And, and and like I said, this is this is a significant amount of money actually. Um, and um, how the hell, that's how do you even get that done? So, you it's know, this ways. The, 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 <laughs> it, was, it was a long process of finally being able to get my credit healthy as an adult. Yeah, yeah. I'd never had that opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, also just... You had no personal debt and you had a, a good score? Uh, no, I have personal debt. I do have personal debt. No, I mean uh, when you did that transaction. Oh, uh, so right, like, like student loans, like the regular stuff. Okay, yeah, but that's... But nothing bad. glaring. I think what they're more interested in, like, if you're a founder and executive at a company and your company's doing well, they think that you as a person are doing well also, right? Sure. Like, like you know, you command a certain amount of resources or have some cash flows, you're going to figure it out. So the, the, I think that it does increase your ability to borrow money. But again, these were hard money lenders. Yeah. So they're, they're not. They're not like this is not a bank. This is yeah. this is like Very basically loan lenient. shark. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. This is like yo, you want the money? Okay, yeah, take the money. Like it's you're gonna get fucked, but you know. <laughs> um, so you know, again, I don't recommend that anyone do that. But they, a um, lot of people actually do that. There was actually a big thing about that not too long ago, and. A lot of Bronx businesses were getting. In oh, trouble. I I believe it. I believe, because honestly, what they do is no different than like a payday advance. Yeah, that is the predatory. same kind of. Sure. Yeah, it's, it, it it definitely is predatory. Uh, the difference is that's like it's tens of thousands of dollars, potentially I guess hundreds if if you can get there. Uh, but they'll, they'll do it. They'll do it. But um, you know. But that's again belief to the level because you're not the only one. I've, I know many people have done that. Right. So that that you knew you were gonna be able to raise that money. So 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 right. Well. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't know. You can believe what you want. Right? Yeah, you know. To the check so so I was I was I was fully cognizant that I was gonna take this money and figure it out no matter what, right? Like so even if we didn't raise money, okay, we lose the office, we lose this. I'll be fucking working this from the fucking bottom of a bridge. Right until I, 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 I was able I to come back to out, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, you know, I think there, there, there's really no way I think to anticipate or chart a path to this. I think you just have to be ready and flexible, and you know, delusional, delusional. <laughs> Absolutely, there you go. Yeah, there you go. yeah. That would be the ending sentence of yes, the book. Yes, that would be the uh, rainbow. Like, you know, <laughs> but um, definitely awesome show. Um, Check back for us next week at the Bronx Tech Show. What's the oh, URL? Yeah, what, how, how can people find you? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'm on Twitter. I don't really use Twitter that much, but it's product underscore J. Uh, I'm trying to think. LinkedIn? I, I, LinkedIn. Julian or, or Rodriguez, definitely. Please add me on LinkedIn. I really, really love engaging on LinkedIn. I think it's the new place. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a new place where, so that's where like I get my news from now. I think it's the, a good place to foster ideas and, and, and share things. Uh, but I mean, our site, if you have a small business or, you know, bodega owner or restaurant owner, really interested in working with restaurant owners, uh, it's accessbazaar.com. So A-C-C-E-S-S-B-A-Z-A-A-R.com. Uh, yeah, that's who we are. All right. Check back for us next week. Bronx Sex Show. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>